Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Tevedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati. And what we were discussing, we were discussing about the different properties of the uh, molecules uh, within the course uh, molecular biology. So far what we have discussed, we have discussed about the uh, basic properties of the cells. Within that we have discussed about the cellular structures. So, we have discussed about the prokaryotic and as well as the eukaryotic structures. And then we have also discussed about the uh, we have also discussed about the organelle structure. So, we have discussed about the structure of the different organelles. So, and uh, and uh, in the previous uh, module we have also discussed about the different types of biomolecules and how what are the different structure and functional properties of these biomolecules. So, we have discussed about the DNA, RNA, proteins, enzymes and how the activity of these molecules are being utilized by the cell so that they could be able to perform the different types of functions. And uh, in the previous module we have discussed about the discovery of the genomes and how the genome is playing a crucial role in relaying the information from the one generation to the next generation. And uh, in addition to that we have also discussed about the central dogma of molecular biology. So, when you talk about the central dogma of molecular biology, it is a series of reactions which are being required by individual cell or the even the organisms to uh, produce the proteins and these uh, uh, events are being tightly controlled and regulated at multiple steps. So, in this process we have the three different processes. In the process 1 you are actually going to have the synthesis of the new DNA from the pre-existing DNA uh, through a process which is called as replications. These reactions are being catalyzed by the enzyme which is called as DNA dependent DNA polymerase. Then subsequent to that the DNA is also being responsible for production of the or synthesis of the RNA and this process is called as transcription and uh, this uh, process is also being is catalyzed by the DNA dependent RNA polymerase and once the RNA is being formed it is actually going to be utilized by the uh, by the protein synthesis machinery to produce the protein and then this process is also called as translation. And uh, in the current module we are discussing about the transcriptions. So, if you recall in the previous two lectures we have discussed about the uh, transcription in the prokaryotes and in the transcription as well as the transcription in the eukaryotes. So, when we were discussing about the transcription in prokaryotes we discussed about the uh, different uh, events like the initiation, uh, elongation and terminations. Within the initiation we discussed about the how the, the the RNA polymerase is being assembled onto the promoter site and what is the composition of the promoters and so on. So, and subsequent to that we have also discussed about the eukaryotic promoter, eukaryotic tra transcription and within the eukaryotic transcription we discuss about how the pre-initiation complex is being formed, how the RNA polymerase is different from the eukaryotic, from the prokaryotic RNA polymerase and so on and what are the different events are happening within the eukaryotic transcriptions. So, in today's lecture we are going to discuss about the uh, another important topic that is related to the transcription and that is called as post transcriptional modifications. So, uh, transcription the, pro the generation of the RNA from the DNA is called as transcription and as a result of transcription you are going to have the uh, three different types of RNA. You are going to have the ribosomal RNA, you are going to have the tRNA and you are going to have the messenger RNA. So, formation of RNA from the DNA is known as the transcription right and uh, at the result of transcription you are going to have the three, three different types of RNA species. You are going to have R ribosomal RNA, you are going to have the tRNA and you are going to have the messenger RNA. Now, if you recall when we were discussing about the uh, transcription in the prokaryotes, the transcription in prokaryotes you are going to have the single RNA species, a single uh, RNA polymerase 
to do this job right whereas in the case of eukaryotic transcription you're going to have the three different types of rna molecules your rna polymerase molecules you're going to have the rna pol1 pol2 and pol3 and all these are actually going to have the separate set of the genes which are responsible for the production of ribosomal rna tRNA, and messenger rna now these messenger rna and ribosomal rna are actually going to be uh, presented as a crude molecule okay so uh, once they are been synthesized they are actually going to be refined or i will say they are actually going to be uh, modified in such a way that they will be more competent in terms of doing the job. So, they are actually going to go through with the process of called as post transcriptional modifications. So, uh, you, once you have synthesized, they are actually going to be present as a crude. Uh, molecules and then you are going to have the post transcriptional modification. The purpose of post transcriptional modification could be very different. One of the major process is that it is actually going to be required for increasing the stability of the molecule. The second is it is actually going to provide the attachment site for uh, many part of molecules. So, it is going to be for attachment site. And the third is it is actually going to be required for the making the molecules more versatile. So, so that uh, it is actually going to be interacting with more number of molecules and they will be uh, going to do many more functions. So, first we will going to talk about the post transcriptional modification within the messenger RNA and then we are going to take up the post transcriptional modification in the ribosomal RNA and as well as the tRNA. Now, messenger RNA, so messenger RNA there will be uh, three different types of post transcriptional modifications what is going to happen in the messenger RNA. You are going to have the addition of a cap to the 5 prime end, then you are going to have a poly tail at the 3 prime end and then you are going to have the splicing of the introns from the gene. right? So, uh, this these two events are actually been required for increasing the stability of the molecules. So, RNA polymerase is uh, uh, sorry, so messenger RNA is being synthesized as a crude messenger RNA right and then it is actually going to be modified. So, initially you are going to put the 5 prime cap and you are going to have the coding sequence and then you are going to put the 3 prime poly a tail and uh, you are also going to remove the unwanted uh, regions within the gene and that is how it is actually going to be a mature messenger RNA. So, this is going to be mature messenger RNA where you are actually going to have, so you are going to remove the uh, introns right and you are also going to put the 5 prime cap and you are also going to put the 3 prime cap, 3 prime poly a tail. Now, let us first discuss about adding of the 5 prime end cap. So, adding a cap to the 5 prime end. So, 5 prime cap and cap the as I said you know already that it is actually been required for providing the stability of the molecule. So, capping in eukaryotic cell the messenger RNA is inevitably unstable at the end. So, so it needs to be modified at the end to protect it against the ribonucleases. Messenger RNA is capped so that it is protected from the ribonucleases as well as it is important in the binding of messenger RNA to the ribosome for the translation. It uses a certain cap binding protein complexes. Capping reaction starts soon after the transcription has started right. Remember that the as soon as the transcription start the messenger RNA 5 prime end is actually going to be out right and that is how it, the capping reaction will start so that the 5 prime end should be get protected from the uh, ribonucleases and it is also going to serve as a docking site for the ribosome assembly and it is going to be assembled on that particular 5 prime end. So, that anyway we are going to discuss when we are going to discuss about the translation. So, as soon as the 20 to 30 nucleotides are formed the capping occurs 
At the 5 prime end, the capping process occurs. A slightly modified guanine, the 7 methyl guanine, is attached backward by a 5 prime to 5 prime linkage to the triphosphate of the first transcribed base. Capping reaction includes the condensation of the GTP with the triophosphate at the 5 prime end, followed by the methylation of the guanine at N7 site. Further methylation occur at the 2 prime end hydrolysis of the second and third nucleotide adjacent to the cap. So, this is actually the 7 methenine guanine scene uh, uh, cap, which is actually going to be placed onto the 5 prime end of the messenger RNA. And how this is actually going to be synthesized? that you are actually going to have the uh, nucleotide right. So, you are going to have the uh, guanine triphosphate or GTP and the, from guanine the, uh, GTP there will be a phosphohydrolase enzyme which is actually going to remove the PI and as a result of this it is actually going to remove the, uh, the uh, it is actually going to remove the gamma phosphate right. And then uh, the you are going to have this right, you are going to have this and then uh, the, the so this is actually the messenger RNA right and, uh, and then uh, the you are going to have the addition of the GTP. So, GTP also is going to have the 3 phosphate rings, you are going to have the alpha, beta and gamma and then you are going to have the guanyl transferase and guanyl transferase is actually going to transfer the GTP onto this and as a result and there will be a removal of PPI. So, this these two are actually going to be removed and this are actually going to be attached onto this and then uh, there will be a release of PPI. This release of PPI is again going to be form the P, 2 PI and that also is going to give you the energy. And uh, then uh, you are going to have this complex and then this complex is going to be get methylated by the guanyl 7 methyl transferase by enzyme and uh, that is how the there will be uh, addition of methin at the G site right on the, on the guanine site. So, there will be addition of methin methionine um, methyl group at this site and then there will be another methylation at the 2 prime site and that that reaction is going to be catalyzed by the 2 methyl transferase and that is how you are going to have the 7 methyl uh, to, uh, 7 methyl uh, guanine which is actually going to be attached onto the messenger RNA. And this uh, cap is very stable because this cap is not going to be recognized by the RNA polymerase because this cap is uh, not neither uh, because it is this cap had so many methylations and all those kind of modifications. So, they are actually not going to be recognized by the RNA poly, uh, RNAs is what is present in the cytosol and then on the other hand this cap is actually going to be specifically be recognized by the ribosome and that is how it is actually going to be responsible for initiating the protein synthesis from this end. Then the second modification is the adding addition of a poly A tail on the 3 prime end. So, on this side you are going to have the poly A tail. So, eukaryotic messenger RNA has a series of adenosine residue ranging from the 80 to 250 in the number forming a poly A tail at the 3 prime end of the primary transcripts. Uh, the, this poly A tail has several uses. Okay. It can be export mature messenger RNA out of the nucleus, right? It increases the stability of the messenger RNA and number 3, it serves as a recognition signal for the binding of translational factor during the uh, initiation of the translation. The process requires the template independent RNA polymerase called a poly A polymerase, right? So, this is going to be the uh, the, uh, the reactions side. So, then the first step what you are going to have is you are going to have the binding of the CPSF right. So, that CPSF will go and bind to the uh, primary transcripts right and then there will be a binding of the additional factors which is called as STSF and CSF and these are actually going to bind the a polyadenylation site right and then there will be a binding of the poly A polymerase. Remember that the poly A polymerase is a uh, is a template independent polymerase right. Remember that the DNA polymerase requires a template, RNA polymerase also requires a template but in this case the poly A polymerase does not require a 
template and then the uh, polymerase, polymerase is actually going to add the series of A's onto the 3 prime end of the primary transcripts. The length of this uh, uh, poly A tail like for example, it can range from the 80 to 250 right. So, depending upon the number of A's it is actually going to uh, say that what will be the age of the messenger RNA. Okay. Then we have the third step and the third step is that the splicing or the intron removal of the intron. So, remember that in a eukaryotic system what you have is you have a uh, you have the genomic region. The genomic region is actually having the two region one is called as the exon and the other is called as the intron. Okay. And, uh, so, you can have the multiple exons and the introns and these introns are actually the non-coding regions. So, these introns are the non-coding region of a pro, uh, non-coding region what is present in the uh, in, in the gene. So, since these are non-coding region and they will be present within the coding region, this co non-coding region has to be removed and then only you can be able to attach the, the exon 1. So, this is the exon 1 and this is the exon 2. So, you can actually need to con, uh, attach the exon 1 to the exon 2 by removing the intron uh, through a process which is called as the splicing. So, uh, this is been achieved after the RNA is or messenger RNA is been synthesized. So, introns are the non-coding nucleotide sequence within a gene that do not code for the protein and do not appear in the final messenger RNA molecule with that is were removed by a process which is called as splicing. Protein coding sequence of a gene known as the exon which are interrupted by the intron. The vast majority of the eukaryotic genes are interrupted by non-coding regions that is intron which needed to be spliced out. However, histone protein coding gene is in the vertebrate in a one exception right. So, in a histone protein coding gene the you are actually going to have the no splicing. The occurrence of the intron varies in the eukaryotic species. Some yeast species lack intron and many genes in the eukaryotes carry the a dozen of them. Few bacterial and archaeal genes also have the introns. So, introns can vary in a length from 50 to 20,000 nucleotides. In higher animals such as human, the introns are uh, more than the exons, which means in higher uh, animals like mammals, you are going to have the more bigger region of the non-coding region rather than the coding regions. There are four classes of the introns. Uh, you can have the group 1 introns, you can have the group 2 introns, both are the self-splicing intron and does not involve any the protein enzymes. Then you have the spliceosomal introns, they are the not self splicing introns and then you also have the introns that require the ATP for the splicing. So, depending upon the structures and the other kinds of features, the introns could be of 4 different types, group 1, group 2, spliceosomal introns and the introns that do not require the ATP for the splicing. So, uh, splicing is a very very important feature, but it is mostly been associated with the eukaryotic genes rather than uh, prokaryotic genes. So, as a as a thumb rule uh, most of the eukaryotic genes are actually having the introns although there are exception that in some of the yeast gene there is no intron present and also the prokaryotic genes do not contain the introns. But there are exception that some of the bacteria and the archaea bacteria are actually having the introns in their genes. So, uh, keeping the exception uh, on a side, introns are present in the uh, eukaryotic system and introns are absent in the prokaryotic system. So, let us discuss first the uh, splicing by the different mechanisms. So, uh, splicing mechanisms first is the splicing mechanism in the group 1 and group 2 introns. A splicing mechanism of both the group 1 and group 2 remember these are the self splicing introns involves the similar steps of the two trans reaction in which a ribose 2 prime or 3 prime hydroxyl group 
makes a nucleophilic attack onto the phosphorus and a new phosphodiester bond is formed at the expense of the old. So, this is the mechanism in the group 1 and this is the uh, uh, reactions in the group 2 uh, introns. So, what will happen is that this is the region what you are supposed to remove. So, this is the intron right and intron is always been characterized by a specific pattern of the nucleotides what is present in that particular region right. For example, it is having the G and all that. So, uh, what will happen is there will be a two event of the, nucle uh, the uh, nucleophilic attacks by the 2 prime and 3 prime hydroxyl group and as a result. So, what will happen is the first nucleophile attack would be on this side right. So, this is going to be first nucleophile attack and as a result this bond between the pi prime uh, this bond between the this is going to be broken and then this is actually going to have the nucleophilic attack on this right. And this is going to have the nucleophilic attack on this and as a result this particular portion is actually going to be removed and this is actually going to form a bond. So, this is actually a uh, exon 1 and 2 and this is actually going to be the intron what is present. So, in a group 1 introns the there will be a nucleophilic attack from the this OH right what is present on the interface uh, on the boundary of the first exon and the intron and then the, there will be a second nucleophilic attack from this OH onto this phosphate and as a result there will be a bond which is going to be formed and this uh, uh, the in, ex, ex, intron is actually going to be removed. In the group 2 the where you are actually going to have the lariate formation the, there will be uh, exactly the same way that you are going to have the 2 rounds of the, uh, the trans esterification reactions. So, and uh, that actually is going to result into a, uh, a addition of the 1 and 2 exon and there will be a removal of lariates. Then we have the alternate splicing. So, the alternate splicing mechanism is a method which is substantially used for many mammalian genes can result in the multiple product that vary structurally and functionally from the same pro primary transcript. Some type alternate splicing is unregulated phenomena which is some in strictly regulated. One of the best example of regulated alternate splicing occurs in the sex determination in Drosophila. In Drosophila, three genes are involved in sex determinations, sex lethal cell that is the XL transformer genes that is the TRA genes and double sex genes that is DSX. So, in the Drosophila what you have or in the alternate splicing what we have is you are actually going to have a gene for example, this gene has four exons followed by the introns. So, you are going to have the exon number 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now, what will happen is that you are going to have the primary transcript that is going to be formed as messenger RNA right and then you can actually have the multiple combinations you can have the 1, 2, 3 you can have the 1, 3, 4 right. So, this 1 is actually going can come along with 2 and 3 and that is how you are going to have this this is the transcript 1 right and if 1 comes with the 3 and 4 then it is going to form the this. And there are many more other combinations also like for example, one can come with 1, 2 and 4 right this is going to be the third combination and you can also have the another combination that is the like 1 followed by 3 followed by 4 or 1 followed by 2 followed by uh, followed by so 1 followed by 3, 1 followed by 4. So, all these combinations could be possible or 2, 3, 4 actually there will be another combination that is like 2 followed by 3 followed by 4. So, these are the some of the alternate splicing where one exon is making a combination with 2 and 3 or one exon is making a combination with 3, 4 or one exon or two exon is making a combination with 3, 4. So, these are the um, different combinations what could be possible and as a result of this only the mammalian genome has the potential to produce different types of proteins and different types of uh, proteins even from the single gene. Due to the alternate splicing, the functional genes are produced in females and non-functional genes are produced in the male. So, this is a, just an example that where uh, the, the one example is in Drosophila where the sex determination is being done by the three genes that is called as sex lethal genes, transformer gene and double sex genes. And uh, as a result of alternate splicing, the functional genes are produced in the females whereas, non-functional genes are produced in 
males right alternate splicing occurs using two mechanism one when we two uh, one when two poly a or cleavage sites are available in the primary transcripts cleavage occurs at either side resulting in the two products such mechanism is followed by the variable domain of the immunoglobulin heavy chain and their diversity is due to the mechanism of alternate splicing similarly the alternate splicing with such mechanism results in the product of two different hormones calcium regulating hormone in the red thyroid and the calcitonin gene related peptide in the rat brain other mechanism involves more than 3 prime site or 5 prime site hence splicing occurs by taking either of those 3 prime uh, splice site resulting in the different products then we have the another uh, messenger RNA splicing right. So, such mechanism is followed by a variable domain of the immunoglobin heavy chain and other variant is due to the this mechanism of alternate splicing. So, the alternate splicing is a very 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 robust phenomena what is happening within the eukaryotic system and it actually allows the production of different types of variations uh, within a biological system and as a result you are actually going to have the different types of protein what is going to be produced even from the single gene. Now, let us move on to the next uh, uh, RNA that is the ribosomal RNA. So, processing of ribosomal RNA eukaryotes have 87 80s ribosomes whereas, the prokaryotes have the 70s ribosomes. Ribosomal RNAs are transcribed as a long precursor sequence which is then modified at a specific basis and cleavage to give the mature product. In both bacteria and eukaryotic ribosomal RNA processing involve two basic steps of cleavage and the base modifications. So, ribosomal RNA processing in bacteria. So, ribosomal RNA precursor in bacteria is a 30S RNA ribosomal RNA which is modified and cleaved to give 23S ribosomal RNA, 16S ribosomal RNA. 5S ribosomal RNA and some tRNA segment in between are also there sometime. 30S pre ribosomal transcript consists of the 16S ribosomal sequence followed by the spacer which may have tRNA sequence in some cases and there is a 23 ribosomal RNA sequence followed by the 5S ribosomal sequence near 3 prime end. At times there is one more tRNA sequence after the 5S ribosomal RNA sequence at the 3 prime end. There are several different genes for ribosomal RNA in E. coli. They are essentially similar in sequence of ribosomal segment, but differ with number and sequence of tRNA segment. Maturation process involves the methylation of the 3 prime 30 S ribosomal precursor at a specific site occurring at 2 prime hydroxyl group of bases. Some bases such as uridine is modified to pseudouridine or dihydrouridine. Further cleavage process is carried out using the enzyme RNase 3, uh, RNase P and RNase E at the site 1, 2 and 3 respectively. Intermediate products are formed mainly as 70S, uh, ribosom, uh, 70S ribosomal RNA, tRNA, 25S and 5S. These are acted on by certain nucleases to give the final product of 16S uh, tRNA, uh, 23S. 5S respectively. So, this is actually going to be the primary transcript where you are going to have the uh, 16S ribosomal RNA, tRNA gene, then you are going to have 23 ribosomal RNA and the 5S ribosomal and after this you are going to have the mature RNA where you are going to have the 16S ribosomal RNA, you are going to have the tRNA, you are going to have 23S ribosomal RNA and you are going to have the 5S ribosomal RNA and you know that all of these are actually going to come together to give you a 70S ribosomal RNA. Then ribosomal RNA processing in the eukaryotes. So, in the eukaryotes nucleolus is the site of processing the ribosomal RNA. A 45S ribos precursor is formed by the RNA ball 1 and processed in the 90S pre ribosomal nuclear complex to give the 18S, 28S and 5.8S ribosomal RNA. There is a tight coupling of RNA processing with the ribosomal assembly. 5S ribosomal RNA is transcribed by the RNA pol 3 from a separate gene. Precursor RNA undergoes methylation at more than 100 bases from the 14,000 nucleotide at 2 prime hydroxyl uh, groups. 
Further more, there is a modification of bases such as uridine to serouridine etc. followed by a series of cleavage reactions. Cleavage and modifications are guided by the small nuclear roller RNA. In yeast, the entire processing involves the pre-RNA, 170 non-ribosomal protein, 70 SNO RNA and 78 ribosomal protein. SNO RNAs are supposed to be the remnant of the nucleus, uh, splicosomes. So, this is going to be the ribosomal RNA, pre ribosomal RNA, which actually contains the gene for 18S, 5.8S, and 28S, and then this is going to be cleaved, and, and from separately, you are going to have the 5S ribosomal RNA, right? And these all are going to be combined, and it will actually going to give you a mature ribosomal RNA that is the 80S ribosomal RNA. Now let us talk about the processing of the tRNA. So, uh, we do not you do not have to worry about the structure of the tRNA because that anyway we are going to discuss when we are going to discuss in the uh, into the because the tRNA has a major role in the protein production right. So, that we are going to discuss when we are going to discuss about the uh, translation right. So, in both the eukaryotic and prokaryotic tRNA processing occurs. It is transcribed as a long precursor, sometimes as a single primary transcript carry more than uh, tRNA, one tRNA segment which is separated by the cleavage. Processing of pre-tRNA involves cutting, cutting off the extra sequences by the endonucleases such as RNAs pre at the 5 prime end and RNAs D at the 3 prime end. RNAs P is a ribozyme which is a RNA exhibiting catalytic activity. After removal of the sequences from the 3 prime end, the CCA sequence is added by the enzyme tRNA nucleotidyl transferase. This enzyme binds to the C3 sequence at its active site and phosphodiester bond is formed with the 3 prime end. Furthermore, there is a base modifications occurring simultaneously such as methylation, deaminations or reduction. In case of the pseudo uridine, the uracil is removed and reattached to the sugar through the 5 prime end. So, when you when you will when we will going to show you the structure of the uh, the tRNA and you will see that uh, there are different regions in the t within the tRNA you are going to have the different types of CCA and you are going to have all those kind of things you are going to have anticodon uh, uh, chain and all that. So, that time you will be able to understand why the tRNA is actually going to be modified for all these modifications and that is how we are actually going to have the mature product and these mature product are actually going to participate into the protein synthesis machinery. So, what we have discussed so far we have discussed about the uh, replications, we have discussed about the transcriptions. And, uh, uh, and in the current module, we have discussed about the prokaryotic transcriptions, we have discussed about the eukaryotic transcriptions and in the current lecture, we have discussed about the post transcriptional modifications. So, within the post transcriptional modifications, we discuss about the how the messenger RNA is actually going to be uh, modified. So, messenger RNA is going to be uh, capped at both the ends, it is actually going to have the 5 prime cap and it is going to be protected from the 3 prime end by the having a poly A tail. Apart from that, the messenger RNA is also going to be modified by removing the introns and this process is known as the splicing. So, there, there are going to be 4 different types of splicing uh, introns, right? You are going to have group 1 intron, you are going to have group 2 introns, you are going to have the spliceosomal introns and you also require the, you are also going to have the splicing where you does not require the ATP. So, these are the 4 different types of uh, splicing, uh, different types of introns what are present in the eukaryotic system. In general, the introns are not present in the prokaryotic system and uh, they are only present in the eukaryotic system, but there are exceptions both in the prokaryotic system and as well as in the eukaryotic system. For example, there are yeast genes where there is no uh, introns present right? and, uh, and there are pro uh, uh, prokaryotic bacteria or the archaebacteria where the introns are present. So, these are some exceptions, but in general, the introns are absent in the uh, prokaryotic system and introns are present in the eukaryotic system. Now, uh, introns are actually playing a very crucial role because it is allowing the alternate splicing and alternate splicing is a robust mechanism and the tool through which the eukaryotic uh, organisms are actually been able to produce the multiple types of different types of proteins uh, by the single transcripts. 
Uh, so within the transcripts, they, the multiple types of genes can come together, right? For example, if within the one transcript, you have the four genes, one, two, three, four. So either the one, two, three can come together or one, three, four can come together and that's how you are going to have a protein which is made up of, of one, two, three or one, three, four. So uh, from the sing single transcript, you can have the different types of proteins. So uh, and at the end, we have also discussed about the, trans uh, the post transcriptional modification in the ribosomal RNA and as well as the tRNA. Uh, you will be able to understand more when we are going to discuss about the ribosomal RNA, uh, structure of the ribosomal RNA and the uh, structure of the tRNA in the subsequent modules uh, and uh, why there will be a modification required in these structures. So with this, I would like to conclude my lecture here. In our subsequent lecture, we are going to discuss some more aspects related to uh, molecular biology. Thank you. Mm -hmm.